In today's show, Bitcoin price almost clears 43500 with Terra $125 million Bitcoin buy-ins gathering pace. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis. And as crypto analyst Credible Crypto shares here, sub $40,000 Bitcoin sellers sweating right now as $125 million chunks of fiat being deployed into Bitcoin 10% higher than they were sold. And as Pentoshi shares here, 2500 to 3000 Bitcoin per day of supply removed over a long period of time equals huge impact. Those who are short have to cover higher at some point as supply itself dissipates. What is scarce becomes more so. This clip can bring back the apes in which Duquan is the lord of the apes. And speaking about the Terra slash Luna founder, he was asked by Adam Back, where's the $10 billion coming from? In which he responded, it's not $10 billion today. As UST money supply grows a portion of the seniorage will go to build Bitcoin reserves bridged to the Terra chain. We have $3 billion in funds ready to seed this reserve, but technical infrastructure such as bridges, etc. still not ready yet. And this just in breaking news, the president of El Salvador, Najib Bokele, tweeted, the U.S. government does not stand for freedom, and that is a proven fact. So we will stand for freedom. Game on. Bitcoin is FU money. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that the U.S. government would be afraid of what we're doing here. And this just in breaking news, the fourth largest city in New Hampshire now lets residents pay their bills in Bitcoin and crypto. Let's go. Also breaking news, Honduras' central bank pushes back against the legal tender rumors and says Bitcoin is not regulated. And this just in, Florida Governor DeSantis confirms that the state is working on a plan to let businesses pay for their taxes in Bitcoin and crypto. And quoting him right here, I've told the state agencies to figure out ways where if a business wants to pay tax and cryptocurrency to Florida, we should be willing to accept that. We're working through that. And he also says, I think a way to mainstream Bitcoin is for governments not to be hostile to it, but instead embrace the benefit of the technology. Also in today's show, here's what will push the Bitcoin price to $1 million per coin, according to the BitMEX founder. That's right. He explains that the growth in gold would also see Bitcoin grow rapidly, saying as gold marches its way above $10,000, Bitcoin will march its way to seven figures. The bear market and fiat currencies will trigger the largest wealth transfer the world has ever seen. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently pumping and in the green. But where's the Bitcoin price? likely to go next. Find out all this, plus so much more, in today's show. Here are Crypto News Alerts. I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs, along with $100,000 Bitcoin price. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Today's episode is brought to you by FTX US, built by traders for traders. That's right, FTX US is the best way to buy and sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, as well as other digital assets. And did you know you can trade crypto with up to 85% lower fees than its top competitors? That's right, there are no fixed minimum fees, no ACH transaction fees, and no withdrawal all fees. Also note that FTX is the only leading exchange that supports both Ethereum and Solana NFTs and there are no gas fees. And you might have heard of them from their Super Bowl commercial with Larry David or their partnership with Stephen Curry and Tom Brady. That's because the world's biggest names trust FTX. And they have a special promo they're running right now where if you download the FTX app today and use my promo code Crypto News, you can earn free crypto on every trade over $10, truly making this a no-brainer. And the more you trade, the more you earn. So go ahead and download the FTX app today by clicking the link in the description right down below. Use my referral code Crypto News and let's start stacking and those sats, shall we? All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, broadcasting live from the beaches of Puerto Rico. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Now there's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Bitcoin returned to $43,000 this morning on March 24th as new purchases by blockchain protocol Terra fueled optimism. And right here, looking at the Bitcoin, one hour candle chart looking pretty bullish. Now data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and Trading View showed Bitcoin attempting to crack and secure its highest levels in weeks on Thursday. Now the Bitcoin slash USD pair had consolidated the day before the sideways action on the lower time frames, giving way to a grind upwards, which took the Bitcoin price action to almost $43,500, a price last seen on March 3rd. Now Terra slash Luna, which had become a focus of attention over plans for a 
giant $10 billion Bitcoin allocation had sent Tether, USDT, from its alleged wallet worth almost $750 million at the time of this recording. And Terra co-founder Duquan had at first given a $10 billion target for backing the firm's new US dollar stablecoin, followed by $3 billion in an interview at the weekend. But on Tuesday, reconfirmed that the ultimate goal was $10 billion. It all started here with this tweet. UST with $10 billion plus in Bitcoin reserves will open a new monetary era of the Bitcoin standard, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that is easier to spend and more attractive to hold, in which Adam Back then asked, where is the $10 billion coming from? And Duquan responded, it's not $10 billion today. As UST money supply grows, a portion of the seniorage will go to build Bitcoin reserves, bridge to the Terra chain. We have $3 billion in funds ready to seed this reserve, but technical infrastructure such as bridges, etc., is still not ready yet. And with liquidity seemingly pouring in, the mood among traders was edging towards confidence along with the spot price. Popular Twitter account, Credible Crypto in particular, took aim at those hoping to buy at levels below 40,000, as he shares here on Crypto Twitter, sub 40,000 Bitcoin sellers sweating right now as $125 million chunks of fiat are being deployed into Bitcoin 10% higher than they were sold. And this was in response to the swell alert of 125 million in USDT transferred from unknown wallet to Binance. Let's go. And as Pentoshi shares here, 2,500 to 3,000 Bitcoin per day of supply removed over a long period of time equals a huge impact. Those who are short have to cover higher at some point as supply itself dissipates. What is scarce becomes more so. This clip can bring back the apes in which Duquan is the lord of the apes. That's right. Can you say incoming Bitcoin supply shock? Now elsewhere, the news of El Salvador had reportedly pushed back the release of its so-called volcano bonds with Bitfinex to September, which did not seem to sour the mood. But one and a half billion dollars of interest rumored to be vying for the one billion dollar 10 year bond offering. El Salvador's president, Nayib Bokele, remained vocal on social media as U.S. lawmakers escalated measures to investigate the country's Bitcoin adoption. As he shares here, the U.S. government does not stand for freedom, and that is a proven fact. So we will stand for freedom. Game on. Bitcoin is FU money. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that the U.S. government would be afraid of what we're doing here. That's because the Bitcoin game theory around the world domino effect continues, and they are literally shaking in their boots. I love it. So much respect to Najib Bukele. And this just in breaking news, the fourth largest city in New Hampshire now lets residents pay bills in Bitcoin and crypto. More mass adoption. Let's freaking go. And before I break down next story of the day, Bitcoin is not regulated, says Honduras' central bank as they push back against legal tender rumors. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently pumping and in the green with Bitcoin up 2% for the day maintaining around that $43,000 level. We have Ether up over 3%, maintaining above the $3,000 level. Solana up 10%, trading back above $100. Cardano, one of the biggest pumpers for the day, up 15%, trading at about $1.14. While Polkadot, XRP, Binance Coin, and Avalanche are all pumping and in the green. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. The Central Bank of Honduras addressed rumors regarding the country potentially adopting Bitcoin as legal tender like its neighbor, El Salvador. Salvador, and the answer seems to be negative. In a Wednesday statement, Honduras' central bank said, for the time being, that Bitcoin was not regulated in the country and not recognized as legal tender and many others. And they also reiterated its authority under Honduras' constitution that it is the only authorized issuer of banknotes and coins considered to be legal tender in the country. And quoting them here, this does not supervise or guarantee operations carried out with cryptocurrencies as means of payments, according to a translated statement by the central bank. Any transaction carried out with these types of virtual assets is a responsibility and risk of those who do it. The central bank added it was continuing to study with the conceptual, technical, and legal analysis the feasibility of introducing a central bank digital currency, better known as the CBDC, in Honduras. And they said a CBDC would be considered legal tender in the country and regulated accordingly. All I know is this, CBDCs are nothing more than digital fiat. It's crap and it's a way for them to control you. Bitcoin, on the other end, equals freedom because it is truly decentralized, open monetary network. Now, several news sources reported this week that Honduran President Shamaro Castro was considering recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender. El Salvador, which borders Honduras to the west, adopted the crypto asset as legal tender back in September of 2021 and has since planned to construct a $1 billion Bitcoin city with crypto mining operations powered by geothermal energy from the country's 
volcanoes. So yeah, I had to report for you today. Unfortunately, the rumors are not true and they are not adopting Bitcoin as legal tender this or next week. However, other countries have also been making pushes to follow El Salvador's example in adopting crypto. Back in February, we had Mexican Senator saying she planned to introduce a bill to the country's Congress in 2022, proposing Bitcoin to become legal tender, which may be the next nation to do so. The bill being modeled after El Salvador's Bitcoin law, also a lawmaker from the island nation of Tonga, more than 10,000 kilometers from Honduras, is also working on legislation that could see the country recognize cryptocurrencies as legal tender by mid-2023. As the game theory continues, which nation do you feel will be next to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender? Let me know in the comments right down below. And before I break down next breaking story of the day, Florida Governor DeSantis confirms that the state is working on a plan to let businesses pay taxes in Bitcoin and crypto. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap, sitting just under that $2 trillion milestone with about $105 billion in volume in the past 24 hours, with a Bitcoin dominance at 41.6% and the Ether dominance at 18.7%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the day, we have Axie Infinity up 22.5%, trading at $63.71, followed by Cardano up 15%, trading at $1.13, followed by Dogecoin up almost 14%, trading just under $0.14. Cents. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the week, you can see a C of green, which I love to see, with Ethereum Classic up over 60%, LRC up 54%, and Mina up over 47%. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Florida Governor DeSantis says his state is drawing up plans to allow businesses to pay for their tax bill with crypto assets. Let's go. According to a new report by Bloomberg, DeSantis said that the state would be willing to accept digital assets as payment for taxes, quoting him here, I told the state agencies to figure out ways where if a business wants to pay tax and cryptocurrency to Florida, we should be willing to accept that. We're working through that. DeSantis says he is worried about Biden's recent executive order, which called for research on the implementation of the government issuing a central bank digital currency, according to Bloomberg. Now check this out. This is very interesting. The governor, DeSantis, says that the centralized nature of CBDCs could pose a threat to economic freedom. Quoting him here, there is a difference between a decentralized digital cryptocurrency like a Bitcoin and what some are talking about doing at the federal level to convert U.S. dollars into basically a digital currency. I think there is a lot of hazards with that when that's centrally controlled. I worry about the amount of power that would give someone in a central authority to basically be able to shut off access to purchasing certain goods. We'd be in uncharted territory. That's right. If you have a different political viewpoint, they can just shut you off just like that. Now, back in December, DeSantis proposed the Freedom First budget, which included $700,000 to create programs that would make Florida a crypto-friendly state. The budget included three new programs, one that would encourage Florida's Department of Financial Services to use crypto assets within the state. The other two would evaluate the feasibility of making car registration and healthcare available through blockchain technology. We also have Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, who's been exploring the possibility of a city utilizing cryptocurrency. He revealed some details late last year and what the city's government was doing to work towards using Bitcoin for things like permit fees, property taxes, and paying city employees. Quitting him here, I think a way to mainstream Bitcoin is for governments not to be hostile to it, but instead embrace the benefits of the technology. Like with everything in government, it's a process. And we are now about to issue in October what's called a request for proposal. That's the way that we have to select vendors. We'll have a vendor that would allow us to pay our employees in Bitcoin and allow us to accept Bitcoin for fees. We also have a county commissioner who did a parallel resolution at the county to explore allowing us to pay taxes. So if you come in and take a permit out or pay some sort of fee, like an alarm permit fee, that you can pay in Bitcoin. The taxes part, which flows through the county, once the county hopefully approves it, then your property taxes you could pay for in Bitcoin. This is a great step forward. I think many other states in the United States are likely to follow and other nations around the world. I think it's a win-win for all the parties involved. And before I break down our final story of the day, here's what will push the Bitcoin price to $1 million per coin, according to the BitMEX founder. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,100 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my crypto merch store, live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.com.
Daily.net. Also have a daily letter, which goes out to over 30,000 subscribers every single day. To subscribe, visit letter.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasting platforms from Spotify to Apple's iTunes to Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at CryptoNewsAlerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on crypto Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and TikTok. So wherever you're at, be sure to plug in and follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Bitcoin is still in what some refer to as the early innings, meaning that the value of the digital asset is far from where they believe it will be in the future. This has burst some rather optimistic predictions for the digital asset. The latest of these predictions has come from the BitMEX co-founder, Arthur Hayes, who sees the pioneer cryptocurrency reaching as high as $1 million per coin, and he discusses what will drive this growth. There are currently a lot of socio-political pressures that are mounting on the financial markets. The most prominent of these have been the Russian invasion in Ukraine, which has led to multiple sanctions on the former. Hayes touches upon this growing war and the response of the rest of the world, and a new blog post titled Energy Cancelled that was released this week, where he shared thoughts on what this could mean for crypto and other financial market assets. For Bitcoin, Hayes explained that the digital asset would follow gold in a phase shift that will come. This phase shift, he said, will see the demand for assets like gold rise. He further explained that this could very well put the physical asset on its way to $10,000, adding that the market could see stupendous prices for gold that seem unfathomable. This growth in Bitcoin's rival gold would also propel the digital asset forward. Hayes explained both of these assets are hard money, of which one is analog, which is gold, and the other is digital, which is the king crypto. Now, he explains that the growth in gold would also see Bitcoin grow rapidly, quitting him here, as gold marches its way above $10,000. Bitcoin will march its way to $1 million. The bear market and fiat currencies will trigger the largest wealth transfer the world has ever seen. Very powerful words coming from the BitMEX co-founder. In his essay, the BitMEX CEO also explains using both of these digital assets as a store of wealth. He explained that gold is still being bought by banks due to the precedent that has already set historically. Since it is a physical asset, it requires shipping all around the globe for banks and nations to possess it as a store of wealth. And Hayes believes that banks may tire of having to move it around. That's right. Try moving around some gold bars. Good luck. He said that gold is a great store of value, but storing it as an individual can be quite cumbersome. Compared to this, Bitcoin is not hard to store, doesn't require much space, and is easy to move around. Additionally, Hayes believes that for people who already know to spend their fiat and save their gold, taking a leap towards spending fiat and saving Bitcoin is minuscule. And he closes the post by saying that people should not let others paint them in a bad light for wanting to protect their wealth using different monetary systems quoting him here, if even the bougiest, most establishment, sycophantic media outlets come out with the same conclusions as this essay, then it's only those who refuse to open their eyes and ears who will be left in the dust of history, believing nothing is afoot. He concluded, so there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the BitMEX co-founder that Bitcoin price is likely to reach a seven-figure valuation and that goal will hit $10,000 per ounce. And now for a quick recap of what I covered with you here in today's show. Bitcoin price almost clears 43500 with Terra, $125 million Bitcoin buy-ins, gather in pace. And also shared breaking news, Honduras' central bank pushes back against legal tender rumors and says Bitcoin is not regulated. As well as breaking news, Florida Governor DeSantis confirms that the state is working on a plan to let businesses pay for their taxes in Bitcoin and crypto. And we also discuss what will push the Bitcoin price to $1 million per coin according to the BitMEX co-founder, Arthur Hayes. But where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Lawrence Abramoff wrote, there has to be something I'm missing, fam. Why would you postpone the volcano bond issuance? You obviously want to buy Bitcoin when it's cheap. Me think the delay is due to being oversubscribed. They want to increase the ceiling and calculating how much they can afford. Great question, fam. Maybe by waiting till September, they'll have 10 billion ready to flow into the volcano bonds. Let's see. And our next featured comment comes from Gabriel Gonzalez. I've been a subscriber for a year and a half. I'm from Puerto Rico. Thanks for all the info. Greatly appreciate your dedicated support, fam. Much love. Hodl. And our third and final featured comment comes from Frank of Center Square. Hyper Bitcoinization, where Bitcoin surpasses all global currencies, including the US dollar, to become the world's reserve currency. Now we're talking, Frank. Hyper Bitcoinization, let's go. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.